Hello, my name is Nathalie Lesage and I am your host here at Faithful Living Home. I am a born-again Christian and this is part two of a series this week that I'm doing on uh, God's discipline, <laughs> unlocking the secrets to God's discipline. So if you haven't watched part one, I will link it below in the description. You're more than welcome to go and watch it first and then come back to this one. Or you can watch this one too. I'm sure either way you'll get the information and you can use it and see how it helps you. So did you, if you were here um, and watch the uh, first video that I put on up on Tuesday, um, did you try some of the ideas that I shared? Um, like I'm not expecting, you know, everyone to get results um, in the way of how that simple change, like literally overnight, transformed me <laughs> um, into having no pain and, and, and all this much more energy, obviously, because I'm not dealing with this pain constantly, um, and also clarity of mind and, and everything else that comes with it, because I wasn't bogged down anymore. Uh, from the, the massive pain that I was feeling. And so uh, if you did try some of the suggestions that I offered a few days ago, congratulations, <laughs> good for you for trying. And I mean, like I said, you might not get answers like, or like a change, you know, feeling something uh, right away, but just keep with it and see how it goes over time, how you feel over time, right? Um, so, and then let me know in the comments below if you've made some changes and what, you know, let's see how it goes, right? And keep us updated on, on what uh, your progress is. And if you haven't tried or if you haven't watched part one, one and you're going, what is she talking about? <laughs> so, of course, um, it's okay. Don't worry. I'll talk about it more here and uh, you can go uh, view the first part. And if you haven't started yet and you've watched the first part, that's okay too. You can start anytime you want. There's no pressure. There's no obligations. It's just something that I found so helpful for me that was li literally so transforming in my daily life that I have to share about it. And so simple things like imbalances in electrolytes or vitamins, nutrients in your body uh, can cause brain fog, can cause pain, uh, it can cause muscle spasms, cramping, um, it, it can cause even like mood changes, right? And, um, and not in a good way, just like, you know, more down, more, because if we're feeling bogged down by something and we're just not feeling right physically, it affects us mentally, it affects us spiritually, it affects our daily life, how we interact with not only how we speak to ourselves, but how we speak to others as well. And it just makes a difference. I was miserable. I was so miserable. And I'm getting emotional. This was not planned. <laughs> oh, this comes from nowhere, but it, it, no, it doesn't come from nowhere. But what I mean is, I was living a daily life that was not joyful for the past eight years. And when I asked God a very simple question, he answered me, he showed me, and I obeyed him. And overnight, literally, that pain that I was feeling in my shoulder and in my hip and in my joints, in my knees, in my hands, is gone. I'm feeling so much better. Tears of joy, tears of joy. And I know so many people, because I'm disabled and so is my husband, um, I have multiple sclerosis, um, secondary progressive, for those that don't know. And it means I don't get a break, I don't have the uh, rec recurring remitting, that you, you, you know, you do well and you do not so well and, and things like that. Um, but, you know, um, um, illness can progress in and whatnot and however it doesn't mean that everything that you're feeling is tied to that particular 
illness, right? Like that your body is coping with. And one thing that was supremely key was because nobody knew that the doctors, we've tried everything, you know, and the doctors, they don't know everything. I mean, God bless their heart. They study and they have to know an awful lot of things. And the body is so complicated. Nobody can, can understand it all and know it all. But the one source of the truth on our body is our creator, our father. And so, like I said before, you know, if you have, let's say, a, a unique uh, car, let's say like a Tesla, you, where do you go when you have a problem with it that, you know, it doesn't seem like a normal, easy fix, you know? You go to the manufacturer, you go to Tesla. Well, it's same with our bodies, right? Like, God made us, so I went to God because I said, like, all these years I'm spending hours in, and I'm bedridden because of this pain. And I said, look, it, I know this particular pain and these issues, that's not MS related. I know that because I've lived with MS my entire life. So what is this? What is the cause of this so that I can change or fix or, or like make a modification? But I need to know. And one thing that my husband keeps saying all the time, bless his heart, is when you have a dog or a cat or a bunny, we have two bunnies, <laughs> my bunny, and don't forgive me in advance if the computer and the table, my screen moves a little bit because she's like literally at my feet, but sometimes she gets moving and my computer is on a very small um, uh, plastic table that can move. And so sometimes she <laughs> it, it gets bumped a little bit with my feet or her. Uh, but the vet, if you have a sick animal or an animal that is not well, but you don't know what's going on with the animal, what's the first question that a veterinarian will ask of the pet owner? What did your animal eat? Well, guess what? That should be the first question that doctors ask of us when we go and visit them. We go, oh, I'm not feeling so great. I got some pain here. I got this, you know, I... What are you eating? Should be the first question. It seldom is the question at all. Like literally. And so we are what we eat. God made our body and God made the food that he knows would sustain our body and heal our body and feed our body, right? Now, however, fast forward to current, where we are now, we have a ton of zombie foods. They're not made by God. They don't resemble anything that our body can recognize as food and healing and fuel. And we buy that stuff because, uh, of course, they make it taste good. They make it appealing and... And I've, hello, <laughs> I love my treats too, you know, no kidding. But at the end of the day, we all know if we eat proper food and get rid of the zombie foods, we always all feel better. We do. And I'm speaking as a former uh, certified group fitness instructor. I was certified in Barbados uh, over two decades ago. And then later on, I became a uh, Team Beachbody uh, Diamond Level uh, coach as well. Um, and because I, I love fitness, I love eating clean, uh, but we're human and I'm a human and, you know, we just don't eat what we should be eating. We eat what we want to eat and, or we try, you know, but I mean, it's, it's not perfect, obviously. However, with this particular issue that I had that was literally pinning me down in bed for weeks on end. I could not figure out what this was. And so I asked God and he answered me and he said, eliminate seed oils. So I was like, okay, 
I have seed oils in some products. We don't, I don't um, buy and consume seed oils like from bottles and use them to, to do things. We only use olive oil, uh, good olive oil, real olive oil. But those um, seed oils um, are in many zombie products, zombie foods. And so, unfortunately, it includes salad dressings and mayonnaise and condiments and baked goods and all kinds of things. So I, I was already baking our own baked goods. I was already making our own desserts from scratch just because, and using olive oil, just because, um, you know, it's, it's better for us. And two, we couldn't afford the, the prices of the, the cakes and things that we used to buy just because the prices have gone up. <laughs> so, um, but that's why I was saying in my uh, video a couple of days ago, it's a good thing that maybe it's, things are a little tight financially for a lot of people because then it forces us to reevaluate. When we have a pain point, then we have to take a look. Otherwise, we just kind of go on with the same old, same old, and then we don't really pay attention until we don't really have a choice anymore. Right? Like, hello, that's me, right? I, I am human being. We're all human beings. And so if I'm feeling that way, I'm sure you're all feeling that too and to some degree. And so um, the devil wants us stressed out, fearful, tired, and weak, so he can persuade us to hit the easy button that I talk about in my videos. The easy button is the evil button, okay? Don't give that little troll any room to take a hold on you and your life. Just don't. I've let that little troll control me so long. I'm done. Oh, he's going to keep trying. And he's, he's going to keep trying. And that's why we have to be mindful and aware of the tricks. Because the deceptions and the lies and the tricks started in the Garden of Eden. Right? The lies and deception started there. And so we really, really have to be mindful about what we put in our body. And if you see a lot of, um, I can't mention certain things, but you know, there's a lot of uh, pressure, let's put it that way, on uh, certain industries not to produce the proper foods that we need and instead replacing it with all kinds of zombie things that are really not meant to feed us and heal us okay and so um, when we um, ask uh, God questions um, we get answers now we may not get answers right away on some things it takes a while, on some things it's right away. Now in this particular case, he answered me right away, like within 24 hours. He, he, he gave me some sources that came up and this, and it's not like my, let's say my phone listening to me or my computer listening to me talking and then the, the algorithms trying to figure out to feed me what I'm looking for. I only prayed this in my head, okay? So nobody heard me out loud. I did not voice this out loud, but I did ask God specifically and, you know, strongly that I needed answers as to what was going on with this. This was not normal and nothing could be found to be helpful or done about it. There's, like, he knows. The only person I don't know, nobody knows on this earth, but he knows because he made me and he knows me, right? So I asked him and I got the answer. And what I did, I didn't like the answer too much, but I was like, yeah, I could see that for sure. Knowing, knowing what I know about, you know, nutrition and all that, I could see that. So I thought, okay, let's give it a shot right let's just do it and cut it out and so I stopped right away and literally overnight 
my pain was completely gone. And so the rest of the story, I've told it on, in first part, so you can go there and listen to more of it. I don't want to repeat everything because I'm always drawing pretty long on some things. So, um, but basically is I want to talk to you about the discipline um, because Having the discipline to take God's answer, the truth that he gives you, and saying, I trust you, having the faith, and I will do that. As unpleasant as it might be, as I don't feel like doing it, it's not the answer I was hoping to get, or, you know, I don't really want to do it. Oh, do I really have to give up my favorite mayonnaise? Really? <laughs> Yes, I did have to give up my favorite mayonnaise. And guess what? It's worth the price because I'm feeling so much better. Mayo? What mayo? No, thank you. I'll do without. Um, or I'll make my own with olive oil or, you know, or, or make a, a cheese spread or something else that I can make instead. Um, and, uh, and I'm talking about a, a, um, a natural cheese spread uh, made in my own kitchen. Um, so it's kind of like a ricotta cheese and, uh, it's lovely. So, but you know, like we have other options. We have different ways we have. I don't need that. You know, I don't need certain products. And so, um, it, it was like literally overnight done deal. So I see so many people in the disabled community that are in pain and I'm sure, you know, some of the pain is related to whatever the disabilities they're dealing with. But even just regular people I hear, you know, complaining about they're feeling unwell or pain or, or and all kinds of stuff. And, you know, I think it's really a sickness in our society in general, just because we've become so accustomed and so, uh, you know, uh, easy easy quick uh, let's let's just get the pre-made stuff it's easy and quick right as opposed to making it ourselves and so what's happened is because these commercial products are expensive um, my husband and I we are on a very very limited amount uh, per month because we're both disabled and so we are and the prices keep going up our amount of money every month does not go up we are on a fixed disability income and so the, uh, we were cutting out a lot of commercial products anyway because we just couldn't afford to buy them anymore. Um, but like in reality, you don't miss them because now we're back to basically eating more like the way that my grandma used to eat and my grandma used to cook and uh, my mom when I was a little used to cook. But, you know, eventually I remember in high school, coming home and scarfing down a bag of chips, you know, because nobody was home and I was hungry and there was nothing um, ready in the fridge for me to eat other than chips. And, you know, I wasn't cooking at that age uh, so much and uh, I wasn't really allowed to turn on the, the oven or stove uh, if no adult was in the house at that age. Um, I was, cause I was young. Um, and so, um, you know, I, I had what was there. And, um, so I developed those habits. Um, and so, you know, so there's all kinds of things and, and we pick up habits over time in our life and we do better sometimes, sometimes we do less, less good, you know, but having the discipline, um, to stick with it, to continue choosing to, to make the right decision for your health. I think is in a way easier when you're in a lot of pain and then you see a massive switch like I have. Um, it's sometimes if you don't see a change right away, it might be hard to stick with it, but you have to have the faith because God made us. And if you're a born again Christian, um, and this is who the, the channel is for, um, you know that we were made by God and he supplied the food that he knows we need just like he supplies all the food for all the animals and, and everything and so we have and needs that have to be met and in today's world 
it, we really have to be mindful about the choices that we make but read the labels there are some good products that are commercial out there but you have to read the labels know what's in every product and yes it is a pain to look up everything you know what's what's in this product before i go and buy it right another tip if you have a product that you like and that that does well with you and you're eating it and all of a sudden you see a packaging change they re they, they, they relabel it or they change colors anytime that there's a packaging change watch because usually they, they companies i used to work i used to translate um the the, the content of packaging um, the instructions and, and ingredients list and all that for many years and companies do not invest money into brand new packaging unless they absolutely have to and when they do that they actually will do changes in ingredients or quantity so you might end up with shrinkflation in the sense that now it used to be 500 grams and now it's 450 grams um, you know or it's a it's a pound and now it's like three quarters of a pound in the quantity you know in the box or whatever but the a change of labeling always look at the ingredients first because that's usually what triggers ingredient change uh, because they have to be spot on as to what's at the, in the container and so that will trigger a label change uh, as a main thing and a quantity um, so they might change the shape of the container or they might you know change some things you can google that and, and look at and, and find out about that if you don't know anything about that um, so but basically even if I want to say is even if you're used to using certain products and you think oh you know they're good I've always had them they're, they're all clean everything is good in there check always check once in a while have a look or if it's been a while since you've bought something or if you notice a packaging change please check your ingredients before you buy again okay it, things are expensive enough as they are you want to make sure that what you're spending your money on is the best nutrition possible for your body and for your family so um, God is, is um, uh, putting in on my mind this week to talk about the discipline. So we've, we've been into a society and, and growing up and, and uh, especially the last, I would say like the last 25 years or so, um, and with the internet and everything else, a lot has gone forward um, and, and things are easier, we can find information easier, we can, we can do all kinds of things, but we're also sitting at a computer and we're a lot less active than we used to be. So we really have to make the effort to get up and go outside or get up and go and, and do things. And um, so having that discipline, um, if you have that already, good for you, keep at it, okay? Now, having that discipline um, helps us also become more mature in our relationship with God. Um, we should always be making progress. So it's just like um, when fitness training, you want to be growing. You don't want to be like, like, you know, if you compare yourself to like, let's say last year, right? How is your fitness level compared to last year? Are you holding steady? Are you improving a little bit? Or are you declining a little bit? You want to be improving a little bit because the natural aging process is a downhill thing, right? So if we stay stable, but our body's going downhill, our stable is going to go down too. Make sense? So we have to try to do better. Doesn't mean harder, and, you know, there was like decades ago, I, I love kickboxing, I loved um, hit training, like push myself hard for short durations of time and like just go, right? That's not suitable for me anymore with what I'm dealing with, with multiple sclerosis and my balance and everything else that, that comes with that. However, 
I can still do some exercises and be mindful about it and use my body as much as I can throughout the day with doing various things and use those things. And I call that functional fitness. Use your chores and your daily activities to do some some workouts with it. So like earlier, I was cleaning the bathroom and I needed to take a shower afterwards. And so I cleaned the bathroom and I was... Uh, you know, scrubbing the tub and everything and with the sponge and I and, and everything and I was holding with my arms down and I started doing a few push-ups while I was at it. And, you know, just <laughs> not like I'm not talking like on the floor push-ups and everything, but just with my position with the wall and, and the, the side of the tub and everything, I, I did a few push-ups and it felt good and I continued cleaning and then I took my shower and I'm good. Now, before that, my goodness, I, first of all, I wouldn't have been able to clean the, the, the bathroom and take a shower right after. Um, I wouldn't have been able to clean the bathroom and, oh, let's do a few push-ups while we're at it and then take a shower and then be like, be here and, and record a video. And, um, and, and I mean, I, before my videos, like I, I pray for days, I, I have notes, I, I, uh, the the Holy Spirit puts things on my heart of things that he wants me to talk about. And so there's a lot of preparation that goes into that. And it, it requires mental acuity. It requires alertness. Um, I can't do this if I'm a zombie and half asleep, right? But now that I'm not a zombie anymore, <laughs> hi, <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> Hello. So, um, so, but you know what I mean? So it's a journey, there's ups and downs, and sometimes we kind of fall down, we need a little help getting up again. And so like, you know, I was bedridden for eight years, I wanna give you hope. I wanna give you hope because I asked God and, and, and he, he answered and I followed the answer he gave me and I'm feeling much better. And I want you to feel that too. I want you to feel as best as you can feel so that you can enjoy your daily life as much as possible. Because every day that we are given is a gift. And then once that day is past, it's, it's past. So I, I want to try to bring more joy and, and less sadness and less, less stress and less anxiety because it has given me a peace that I didn't realize I could even find. Um, and I, I had heard, you know, about the peace of Jesus Christ and, and, and uh, the, our Father, and I always found comfort uh, praying to, to my Father. But I was, I was still having the anxiety, the stress, the pain, the fatigue, the I am pinned down, I can't function. And now I can function and I'm happy and, uh, and hopefully I'll be a nicer person, not only to the people around me, but a nicer person to myself too, because I had been beating on myself for some time and, uh, little gremlins help with that. Right. And that's because the devil wants to keep us down. And when we know and when we have that good, clear communication with God, then the gremlin is just a little gremlin and you just kind of, you know, toss him aside and go, mind your own business, I'm busy with God. I don't care about you no more. Goodbye. Right? It's easier to walk away from that. So, so um, discipline um, so it helps us become more mature in Jesus. Um, so we should always be making progress and keep growing spiritually until we become like Jesus. It's a journey of a lifetime and then some. Like, this is just like I'm 58 years old, right? Um, I was, uh, I started life as a Roman Catholic, baptized and, and then went to the Roman Catholic Church. And so that was my life for the first, you know, 20 years of my life. And then I married uh, someone who was a Mennonite and a modern Mennonite. Uh, and so um, I went to the Mennonite church for a while. And, you know, 
that was that. But what I saw in both the Roman Catholic Church and the Mennonite Church was the same. People were not applying the Bible to their life. People added to or removed from the Bible. And what does the Bible tell us? What does God tell us? Do not add, do not remove. I am that I am, the truth. Therefore, it doesn't matter on our denominations. You can go to church every week all you want. Have at it, no problem. But make sure that you, as your own person, relation directly with your father, study the Bible. Listen to people who can teach you about the Bible properly. And then we can, you know, we can just strive to do our very best. Um, because knowing that God made us, right? And he wants us to go closer to him. So having some daily communication with him and prayer with him or meditation on a Bible verse that that is touching your current situation is extremely helpful in, in growing closer to God and and getting that peace and, and understanding it. Once you, you get some answers and you understand, it releases the anxiety. Because I used to be so anxious. I was on medication for anxiety and uh, for a number of years. And, you know, I've been off these medications now for a couple of years with the approval of my doctor. I discussed this with my doctor and, you know, but uh, the reason why I actually stopped, not because I wasn't anxious, it's because the side effects on my stomach were so bad that I, I just couldn't take them anymore. And we had cut down and cut down and it, my body was like, you can't take this anymore. And so I had to stop. And instead... I, well, I did stop, and then I turned more to God. And it's a it's a process, right? And I feel so much better for it. <sighs> but we have to be serious. If this is the kind of changes that we're making in our lives, we have to be serious about it and mindful and, and pray for discernment. Pray for guidance. Don't ask your friends and family for guidance. Don't ask your counselors, sorry counselors, for guidance because they do not know us your friends and family do not know you they know of you they know a portion of you but just like the rest of us none of us have the answers we may feel we think we have some answers or some general ideas because of our experience absolutely but if you want the truth and if you we need to ask god and god says everything is in the bible that is my word that is the truth anything outside of that do not add do not remove isn't the truth so stick to the bible okay now um paul i i really have a bit of a kinship uh, with uh, Apostle Paul. Um, for some reason, I had no idea, but I found out um, earlier this year that Paul, through Bible teachings uh, with Chuck Missler of Koinonia House, uh, that Paul had some major troubles with his eyes. And he had like some infections and a lot of pain and trouble with his eyes. And he really struggled with that and and amongst you know doing and dealing with other things but um paul was also very much aware of this need of um growing more mature in our relationship with god um because he he, he states it in colossian uh, colossians 1 
uh, verses 28 and 29. And it goes, um, Whom we preach, warning every man, and teaching every man in all wisdom, that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. Whereunto I also labor, striving according to his working, which worketh in me mightily. So Paul's goal was to keep working with people until he could present every one of them as fully matured in Christ. In a way, um, like I said, I, I kind of feel a, a kinship of, uh, for a few reasons. Like I said, well, because my eyes and my brain are a massive, massive um, issue uh, for me. And so um, there's a lot of things that I'm unable to do because of that. Uh, but secondly, the mission that the Father has put on my heart, I realize now, is the same as Paul's in the sense that I hear God's request very strongly about sharing the truth and, and, and asking people to make the, the, the steps to grow and to mature more. Um, just like in fitness, fitness instructors, you know, like you don't want to be staying stable. You want to improve year upon year. It's the same thing in our walk with Jesus Christ. So uh, I love a saying that Joyce Meyer says. She says, we can't remain baby Christians. We need to grow up. And I realized that, you know, when we're born, we're babies, we're flat on our back, we're, you know, helpless, and we need adults to help us. And then all of a sudden, like, we can sit up on our own, and we're so proud. We don't walk yet, but we're sitting up. And, you know, we're making progress, right? And then eventually, what do we do? We start crawling. And then we start standing up and holding on to things and holding on to other people's hands. And we help each other, right? And then, all of a sudden, this child has grown up and able to walk on their own. And, 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 just, and you see the joy, the increased joy and development from that growth and that progress. Well, it's the same thing with our faith in Jesus Christ. And so staying in the baby stage, it's a comforting place, but we need to start standing up, sitting up, walking. And I think that like for me, I thought that I was walking, that I would, but I realized that I wasn't. I was a baby Christian. And so I needed to grow up. Being honest here. I needed to grow up. And so, and what does that mean? Well, that means that we need to do more than go to church on Sunday. It, it means that we actually need to study the Bible every single day to know the truth. Hearing the word and doing what we hear, what he's asking us to do. So I have a question, right? Are we growing in our relationship with God? Are we growing and improving all the time in our behavior? I was stagnant and stuck in a no fun zone for too many years. And I was dragging people down in there with me. I apologize for that. I'm very sorry. But I'm growing and I'm improving. And I want to do better. And it's my relationship with God that is getting stronger and bigger. And I'm happier. And so, you know, like, if, if you know, we work at that together, and if I say how, how I'm doing it or how I'm going about it, then maybe it can help someone else. 
that's all I'm here to, to share about. I don't know any better than anybody else, right? But I'm just being honest in, in, in hopes, in hopes, because this was so helpful to me. I am pain free. Please understand how huge this is. This is huge. And I hope and I pray that whatever pains, whether mentally, physically, spiritually, you're going through, that you stop and take a moment and start focusing on God every day. It will free you. I have no tissues. I wasn't... <laughs> Tears of joy. It will free you. And you can't buy that. That is a gift from God. And I want everybody to have it. Because I see the people. I see. And we're all searching for that same thing. Well... I got a glimpse of it here, and I want to help light your light too, so that you can feel it too, because it's awesome, it's awesome, and uh, and God is not upset that we haven't arrived, but he does require us to make progress and to become adults in our faith. Can I get an amen on that? So, emotions are said to be the number one enemy. That is so true. True. Boy, my emotions got me in trouble. But you know, two of the biggest ones, and, and God talks about it in the Bible, because look at what happened with Satan, right? Pride. Being prideful. I don't need to know. I, I know everything. I'm good. Pride and fear. Those two are the big ones. Fear of asking questions because we're not sure we're going to like the answers we get. Fears of exploring, studying some facts of the Bible for fear that then we have to make decisions that we don't really want to make. Now, if you're a born-again Christian, you have your salvation. But if God is showing you the truth. And God wants us to pursue and seek the truth. If you're not seeking the truth and not wanting to look deeper into the truth, then you're not following God. He expects us to stand up and seek. So, can't nobody can do it for us. We have to do it for ourselves. Just like a fitness trainer, I can put together a class and say, hey, you know what, on Tuesdays and Thursdays, I'm going to do a um, half hour HIIT training class. And the half hour includes the, the warm up and the cool down. And, you know, and then we're going to have um, a, a little group going and we're going to do this and uh, show up. Let's go. Let's do this and, you know, get dedicated to get some fitness into our life a little bit every week. Right first week probably get a good turnout but like every class sometimes after a few weeks or a few days or a few after a little while it fizzled down fizzled down and then that's where you have the hardcore people the hardcore people continue the hardcore people show up every week every week the disciplined people and so <clears throat> Discipline is about being intentional on wanting to face the whole truth and applying it to your life. And so we do that by meditating daily on the Word of God, 
asking him questions. He loves questions. Ask all of the questions, please. Do not hesitate. It doesn't matter if your question is, should I get the red shoes or the blue shoes? Ask him. And obeying him. What does he put on your heart when you ask him a question? What does he put on your heart, right? Now, sometimes he'll put something on our heart and we go, yeah, yeah, okay, I'll do it a bit later. Maybe, uh, you know, maybe next week or no, I'm kind of busy right now, but I, I'll, I'll get it done. And then we push it off and then we push it off and he puts it on our heart again. And then we push it off and we do it a little bit and go, yeah, okay, <sighs> I don't really want to do it. But, you know, our heart's not into it, but we do it a bit and <sighs> no. Stop that. A mature person will say, yes, father, this is your request. I will obey, I will do it. We're humans, it's normal. Look, Jesus Christ asked his father three times, if you can take that cup away from me. He didn't want to go on the cross. He knew. But he said at the end, Thy will shall be done. Jesus Christ died on the cross for us to give us the peace of God, to give us the freedom. And if we're born again Christian, we owe it to our Father and to Jesus Christ who paid the ultimate price to take this seriously and I wasn't I really wasn't so I ask you where do you think you are on this this whole scale I could do better definitely could do better and so that, and I said, you know what, Father, you're right. I can do better. So we talked, and here I am. One thing he put on my heart, specifically, was to do two recordings a week on YouTube, on Tuesdays and Thursdays, specifically. And this is what I do now. I will be here, and I have been here every Tuesday and Thursday. I record on the computer on the day of. I don't pre-record ahead of time. But I don't go live because I pray and ask for God to watch what I say and make sure that it is in line with the message he wants me to convey and to cut me off at any time. In the weeks that I have done my videos, he's cut me off one time and he literally turned off the camera on my computer and stopped me. So unless God gives me the green light, you won't hear it or see it on video. It's as plain and simple as that. So, in order to set up a, a daily routine, um, to just get closer to God, just kind of get into that habit, right? It takes 21 days to take a, a habit. Some, I would say it takes longer than 21 days. It's, But it, a 21 days is a good, if you do something for 21 days in a row and you, you diligently say, I'm going to do it no matter what, you're definitely on the path to discipline, right? Um, so to make it easier, because you, I'm so, I'm sure you know, you're so busy, everything is thrown at you. You don't know. It's like, how can I find time every single day? Excuse me. So I have a few questions. What time wasters can you eliminate from your daily routine 
and replace that time by pondering on a Bible verse that speaks to you in your current situation or that day or that jumps out at you or you hear it and you go, oh, that's a good one. Let me let me think on that one a little more. Let me read about it and, and uh, research on it or pull up a, uh, you can do a Google search and say Chuck Missler, let's say, and then put, um, you know, uh, Psalm, whatever, and, and then it'll bring up a video that talks about that uh, particular portion of the Bible, and you can get some really great insight that might make you go, that is so awesome, that it's so on point with what I needed to hear today. And and it'll just get you going in in this, this routine of seeking and, and getting answers, and it's awesome. So, um, so one way you can do this is scrolling on social media is a very simple way to find extra time to find Bible study time, right? And so even if you just say like, if you're on, you can look on your phone, the apps will tell you how much time, you know, I spend on Facebook or on, on Instagram or this and that. Look and see, and like I spend some time on Instagram and I do spend some time on Facebook, but nowadays it's to do the Lord's work. And, uh, but I used to have like a little game, a couple of little puzzle games that I liked that, you know, when you're stuck in bed and you can't do much and you're in pain, sometimes you just need a distraction because you're not sleeping or, and you're tired of listening to audio books or you're tired to listening to even Bible teachers because at some point you're just kind of like, okay, I've had my fill, like now my, my cup more than runneth over and I just can't take any more information. I just need to be, you know, checked out for a little bit. Uh, but, you know, playing games on my phone, um, served its purpose at the time, but now it doesn't anymore. And so I removed all the, you know, a couple of games I had. I didn't have that many because I can't with my eyes anyway, but they were still time wasters. And I no longer scroll on Facebook uh, nearly as much as I used to. Obviously, I do go in and seek certain groups or certain things, but apart from that, I don't even look at the feed anymore because, well, first of all, half my feed I'm not seeing stuff that I would like to see. I'm getting all kinds of weird stuff and I'm not even seeing stuff from my friends being posted. So it's like, whatever, you know, Facebook is going to do its thing. Um, so anyway, so, but um, like seriously, um, you know, turn the TV and the phones off and focus on some quality time. Spend doing activities that build your life up in God. And... Um, so Psalm 90, verse 12 says, So teach us to number our days, right? Like make each day fully count, that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. So the discipline is not only having a serious look at what we eat and drink, right? Uh, but also having a good look at what we do with our time and our days. And so... Um, Jeremiah uh, 6 verse 16 um, is a, a good one that comes to mind because if it says um, that's in the Amplified Bible, it's a little bit easier to read than in the King James. And I can only do so much with my pronunciation. I, so I figured I'd go with the Amplified tonight for this one. Uh, but it says, stand by the roads and look. Ask for the ancient paths. Ask God, right? Where the good way is, and you will find rest for your souls. I'm finding rest. I'm finding peace. I'm finding joy. I'm finding everything, right? So I'm asking you, if you want some steps, like people say, like, okay, well, tell me what to do. I don't know what to do. I need, I need concrete steps, a very simple few steps. Commit to making one dietary change for your better health. So if you don't know about the stuff, you can go look at my other video uh, or, you know, ask God, right? Look at your food in your pantries and in your fridge and, and, and the things that you grab on the roads or even the fast food or the restaurants. And you might go, you know what? Maybe, like, for an easy one, let's cut all the fast foods for now. 
like no fast food for a week, right? Or for a few days, if it's something that this is a, is a habit, right? So just commit to making one dietary change for your better health. And then commit to eliminating one time waster from your daily life and use that time waste that time that you've recovered now to study the bible instead even if it's five minutes ten minutes doesn't it doesn't have to be a long time but just do it every day every single day and commit to focusing on one bible verse a day for a month i have a journal design in progress right now because I'm finding, like, I've looked at various journals and, and study journals and Bible studies and all kinds of stuff. And I'm not finding the type of journal that, that really can, where I can put my thoughts and, and, and the questions and the, the, the revelations and whatnot. And so I've got this design in progress. I'll keep you posted. It's definitely something that God put on my heart to design. Um, and so I am doing this. Uh, and it's not only going to help me, I know it will. I hope it will help others as well. And I'll have that uh, available um, at some point. I'm just not sure on the timing yet because this is just the beginning stage. But I follow God's uh, lead on this. And he will tell me when when things are ready. But we're just at the beginning stage right now. Um, so... You know, I had faith in God um, that he would show me the answer to my particular problem with the pain that I was having. And he did. And so then I did the most important thing. I obeyed him. That's the key right there. We can't just obey when we like the answers that we receive, like when the answers suits us. We also have to obey even if we don't like the answer. Do you honestly think I wanted to give up my favorite mayo and my favorite chips? Actually, all chips because I can't, use, I can't eat any commercial chips at this point. Um, <laughs> and I don't miss them. I've, I've got my lovely home fries that I make now and they're delicious and wholesome and, uh, they're much better. So I don't miss the chips because they used to make me feel crappy and seriously. And I tested this and I, I say this in my other video. Um, in my other video, I mentioned that I, after like 10 days, I, I went and I was like, okay, I'm, I'm going to eat some and see if it's gonna come back and it came immediately back the pain the fatigue i was bedridden again for a couple of days i had to get that stuff out of my system once again and i was like i've got my answer i am certain this is it and so now i am free from it and it's not even a temptation anymore wouldn't matter i won't touch it because i know <laughs> right and so um i'm just not gonna go there so temptation has gone on that so thank you i'm happy right um but i didn't really like the answer at first <laughs> i didn't really want to do it but i told him i would obey and i did and i'm so much happier for it so don't be afraid don't be afraid to follow what god tells you to do what he puts on your heart don't be afraid to uh, ask questions and seek the truth. And that's why I share Koinonia House with Chuck Missler, uh, because he's the explainer of the Bible, and I get so much insight from him. And I know God definitely, um, you know, is, is allows everything that Chuck teaches, um, because it is so on point and is so good. And so, um, you know, you have to trust but you have to want to gain knowledge. Nobody can force you to want to gain knowledge. You have to be the seeker yourself, okay? So emotions will tell us how we feel. Sometimes we don't feel like doing anything or, you know, it's too hard or, you know. But they don't tell us the truth. 
And so that is very important. You have to have complete faith in God and the word of the Bible. Seek the truth. Don't let fear stop you. And remember, faith over fear. So this is our broadcast for this evening. I love you all. God bless you. I'll be back on Tuesday next week. I'm not sure on the topic yet. I have to let him tell me about it. But um, I hope that you enjoy this broadcast. And if you could be so kind and share it with friends and family, if it's helpful to you, let me know in the comments if you tried some things and it's working and it's helping because it will help others as well. So I love you. Have a blessed evening. Thank you for listening. I appreciate it very much.